I'm going to show you how to collect 400,000 pieces of eight in a day. If you don't know what that means, it is the end game currency that establishes your rank on the leaderboard and allows you to unlock powerful weapons and ships. I was ranked top 500 and have a few friends who are in the top 100. I'm going to share everything we learned, the mistakes we made, and what we would do if we were to restart and do it from the beginning. I'll try to break down every point as you grow an empire worthy of a notorious pirate king. Feel free to look at the timestamps and jump to the point where you are in your journey. Here are the stages as I see them. I'm going to start off with what I'm calling stage zero. You don't know what the end game is, you're just doing your playthrough, but you want to prepare and learn what pieces of eight are and what the gameplay loop looks like at the end. You may have stage one, which represents anyone who has finished the main storyline uh, all the way past Rama, uh, you've reached Kingpin, and you've opened up the helm. You're just getting started collecting your pieces of eight. Then we have stage two, you have a solid industry set up in the Red Isles, and you're wondering what is the best way to reinvest your pieces of eight. You may also be wondering which region to open up next and or should you be getting the Sandbook schematic. Stage three, you've now opened up a second region and are wondering how to best play and cover the field. Stage four, you're now wanting to make big deposits. You're trying to go 50 to 100,000 pieces of eight in a single run. Stage five is where you're gonna be unlocking that third region and further expanding your empire. And then stage six is how to play when all your factories are level 10, your upgrades are maxed out, and this is where you'll have the chance to crank out 200 to 600,000 pieces of eight every day. Now. Whichever stage you're in, I will be sharing upgrades that I find are worth buying and which ones you should hold on to till later. So first, let's talk about what is the helm, what are pieces of eight, and how does the end game unfold? If you're in stage zero, you're still progressing through the main storyline. You're exploring the map and building small to medium ships. And I would say, take your time and enjoy this part of the game. It, it was my favorite and I kind of miss aspects from that because once you get to the end game it becomes a little bit more repetitive and you're focused on, on one singular mission instead of exploring this massive place and going from this you know outcast to a pirate kingpin and honestly it was a really cool progression so enjoy that. But to reach the end game you need to finish that storyline all the way through and if you haven't reached a woman Rama you're going to Finish all your Skurlock missions, finish all your missions with Rama, and then you're going to reach Kingpin in Infamy, and that will take some time, but once all that's done, you will be able to start doing all the missions for the Helm, a secret organization of scoundrels in the business of supply and distribution of illegal goods, such as rum, gin, opium, and snuff. You, as a member, are going to receive contracts of supply where you get raw materials that then you can refine into those finished goods, and then you're going to deliver them to other, other locations, and then you'll be able to get the pieces of eight, these gold coins, which are a rare currency that you can then use to build the endgame weapons, ships, and place you on the leaderboard. This is also the time where you will start to build your empire, a network of manufacturing plants that will passively generate pieces of eight. You will have to fight other players to take over these plants or work with them in these really hard situations known as legendary heists. And as you start building up your manufacturing plants, you'll collect pieces of eight by sailing through them and then bringing them to home or to a distant port. And that is how you'll start adding and building and you'll keep expanding this empire until you are just a gold mill. It's stage one in the process, but you're wondering how to best use your time and your pieces of eight. So here we go, we're gonna jump into it. We're in our den, in our office. We're our pirate kingpin. Well, you're gonna wanna spend your time right here between these two. This is really, you're gonna wanna hit these every time they're up. So that's the first thing. Anytime you see these, do them before anything else. Um, the supply, doing these four roving missions, it's like five, 10 minutes. You're going to take all four of them. You're going to fast travel to this region and you're going to sail out and destroy one of the merchant ships. This is really important because it doubles every one of these contracts. 
Um, but make sure that you have a snow or else you will lose it uh, some if you get over and overburdened, uh, over encumbered. So go out with the snow. If you don't have a snow unlocked, just take a brigantine and do two of these at a time and then uh, fast travel back and forth, grab all four eventually uh, and do that. You really want to stockpile all your supply. That's going to be huge for later on, uh, both for silver and for supply runs later on to really maximize your earnings uh, pieces of eight. I typically also do the little two um, supply uh, just trade for silver. I think they're just quick and easy, and I always prefer that. You will have basically unlimited gold in the future. And that's also not using any server tricks or anything, so and I'll get to that in a moment. But the other thing you wanna do is your, your deliveries. You need to get these done. This is a huge way to spike your pieces of eight. This really doesn't take that long, especially once you get your brigantine. It takes you five to 10 minutes to make the sale, and this will give you 500 to 1,000 pieces of eight, um, depending on how many upgrades you have. So if we look at this tree right here, uh, you're gonna do the four standard orders, and then you're gonna grab the two roving. And hopefully it's all in the Southern Basin area. That's really, really nice for you. Uh, and same with the, the supply roving, you're gonna go into this order roving and you're gonna destroy one merchant ship and it's gonna double your order. And in this case, it's already 500. And so that doubles it to a thousand. Boom, easy money right there. So you definitely wanna be doing that. Um, so do that every time those are, those are up. Then the rest of your time it should be focused on any of the takeover opportunities. Uh, you should be trying to fill out your entire map so that you're good to go here and really don't don't spend any time sailing around. You probably don't. So what you want to do is try to stagger your supply runs in between your takeover opportunities. And those are really where you're going to be focusing all of your time. Takeover, go do an order supply run, do another takeover. And then maybe just you can mess around with some other things like a short run to like right here, then back, here, then back. But always make your takeover opportunity and always do your order and supply. That's how you should be breaking up your hour of time. Now, for your upgrades or how to spend your money, I would not spend your pieces of eight on anything but this first page of your upgrades for now. This is really important. Once again, you want to get your supply deals boosted as much as you can, and you want to unlock all of the other things. You want to make sure that your refinement is doubling. Uh, the pieces of eight offered in orders is increased. That is where you're going to be making the, the big money that's really quick and, and just helps you get into the late game a lot faster. So that is how stage one goes. You're going to do that until you've unlocked every location in the Red Isle, and then you're going to be moving on to stage two. So you'll quickly realize in this stage that you're funding this empire and it can get pretty expensive. So we want to make sure we have an unlimited silver uh, production line. And so if we go into our distillery here, um, we're going to be able to unlock the gold in uh, gold skull rum and gold skull gin uh, as long as you've upgraded all your pages. Uh, you'll also be able to do the same with the silver snuff and the black opium in to luck. Um, so those are really important because they can be sold for 250 a pop to Skurlock and Rama respectively. Gold Skull uh, Rum and Gold Skull Gin to Skurlock and then the Snuff and Opium to Rama. So that's an easy way to make a whole bunch of money. And you can see right here, I have 3,000 of these just sitting. I'm already almost capped out. And so I can literally quickly just flip that when it's, it's necessary and I have unlimited money uh, not doing any server stuff. Uh, so that's quickly uh, the easy way to always have money. And then for you to start growing your empire using your pieces of eight, if we look back at the map, you're going to quickly realize that um, these have different production rates. And if you upgrade improperly, you can bite yourself and in, in, uh, bite yourself a lot. Uh, and so when I was first playing, I loved to teleport here, go boom, 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 done. And I thought that was a really cool line. And I thought because this was a high level uh, capital, I thought it would be worth spending all my money here. And so I boosted this to level nine pretty fast. And I was just, that that, that was it. Instead of actually just looking at the different numbers and, and figuring it out on an equal playing field, I made a huge mistake and spent a whole bunch of time putting it there. But guess what? This production currently is 81. That's a level nine um, manufacturing plant. So I spent a whole bunch of money there. But if we go over here to a level six, this is already 86. Once again, 86 to 81. This out produces my capital C. So I made a huge, huge mistake by doing that. 
what you should be doing is focusing on this line right here. This is the, the line you wanna be putting your money into because this one also produces pretty good 64. Obviously, this one is the winner for the um, Red Isles. And so you're gonna to wanna to put all your money into this little line right here because you'll, you'll do this one all the time. Uh, you know, it takes like 10 minutes roughly to, to glide around there. Now with season one, we, they did introduce this new annoying pest of the plague units and you're gonna get this big snow uh, ship that's gonna come in and it takes you a while to kill. And, and a lot of people, including myself, are quite frustrated with this uh, mechanic. But once you start collecting gold pieces, the ship's gonna come after you and you have to kill it before you can interact with the next city. And so it just takes a lot of time. It can take like two minutes to bring down. And so that is why it is not a good idea to try and spend your whole time doing a big collection run and collecting everything. And that's what I also spent a lot of time early on doing, was trying to do this nice big run, collecting everything, maybe hit a helm uh, wager event at the end. Realistically, even doubling that wasn't really valuable. And also you can see that I pretty much leveled up everything equal other than the level nine. Lots of mistakes were made here. And that's why I dropped from 500 all the way down to where I am currently. And so for you to avoid that, you're just gonna upgrade this line. I'd say level five, level maybe up to level seven, kind of ignore everything else till later. And then just kind of do this until you've got your 5K. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is unlock the East Indies. Why are we choosing the East Indies over Africa? We had the option to spend the 5K and obviously 5K at this point is a huge investment. Um, why are we choosing coast of Africa over coast of Indies? And the reason is because if we go, and this is a really cool chart uh, posted by a community member in the Skull Boats Discord. If you're not there, I would definitely show up. There's so many players that have really done the math and gone into uh, this and done a lot of work. And this guy, he's maxed out everything. And so he showed uh, where you really wanna put your investments. And so if we look at the Red Isles, right, that, that best city that I showed you, it gets up to 276. And that was a drastic comparison compared to our, our um, uh, the, the capital city of 154. So you can see that that, that spread only gets worse uh, as they, they level up. Um, but if we look at the Indies, we have some crazy production gold per hour. The sunny capital and Singdad produce 466 and 458 respectively. That is huge, it's doubling that. Um, in Africa, there is one that gets above that, but it's only a singular one. And what's key about the East Indies is actually these two are very close to each other. So if we go back here, you can make a really cool line going from here, like you fast travel here, you grab, 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 and then you get back to, to look. Maybe you can hit the, the lumber yard down here as well. That makes a really quick line so you can do that and move on. Um, remember the goal, and this is still relevant at this point in the game, you should be doing your, your orders and your supply runs every hour. Then you have all the takeover opportunities. Those are gonna start coming into play now. So you need to make sure that you go back out and fight for all this territory. And there is a lot of manufacturing plants to take over in this in, in this area. So it's gonna take you a minute uh, several, I mean, you only can do it every 30 minutes. So there's like 30 of them, I think, or maybe it's even more than that. You're going to take a, a, quite a while to actually crank through these. So every hour you're going to try and do one run, collecting everything here back to, to, to look. Then you're going to do your, your supply run over here. You're going to do your run down here. If it's over here, or it sometimes can go up here, uh, for the orders. That's what you're gonna be trying to do every hour. If you can get through all that in that one hour, you're good. If you have a little bit of extra time, you could do another run back here in your base down here and crank through this. In terms of investing your pieces of eight, you're gonna to wanna to invest it in this line right here. And then once this gets leveled up and you've unlocked everything, then it is time to then move on to the next stage. With everything unlocked, you're gonna to start to feel like you have a full empire, at least with the Red Isle and, and the East Indies. You're gonna see a whole bunch of gold picking and you're gonna see a, an hourly rate that feels pretty cool. Like, I think it's like 3,000 or 5,000 probably where you're gonna be around there if you're doing it better than the way I did it. I tried to, to do a big stagger, four to five all over the map. 
terrible idea. Don't don't do that. But from what I, I my friends at the top have told me, this is the best way to do it. And so you're going to have all of these um, lines that are set up nicely, but you're going to want to do you're thinking about doing a big run. And if you want to make a run for the leaderboard, now might be a time to do it. So the Helm Wager event happens once a day. And so, or you can proc it once a day. And what that is, is you're gonna sail around and as you're collecting the coins, you probably saw the pop up, hey, do you wanna take a risk in double or nothing your current amount of gold coins that's sitting in your chest or in your inventory? Uh, if you say yes, it'll, it'll double it, but you have to make it to some distant port or lighthouse um, and five other players can join and try to kill you. Now, this is where I'm gonna rant. Like, the game mode is the only PvP element for pieces of eight, and I wish it was better, because this sucks. It really sucks in its current state, at least in my opinion. You know, five people get to join, they can teleport to any destination, so they can kind of predict where you're going. It's hard not to to um, show off where your general direction you're going, so they, they spawn at your location. They can come fight you, then they can literally leave the event, quit, heal up, come right back in. So even you get them close to dead, they can like flee for a split second, heal up, come right back and kill you. It is just not fair. Then in season one, what they've just done is absolutely ruin this mode because now you get cut sales debuff when you activate that event, which makes your speed significantly slower. So something to consider but that's how the, the players who played pre-season one, how they got super high on the leaderboard, they would do the Helm Wager, they'd have a Brigantine, and they would go around, they collect everything they could, go on through all here, and then around here, they typically would collect the last um, one and proc the event. And so you don't need to collect it at full to proc the event, you can just collect a single coin. And so you could literally sit at this last location, wait until there's one coin, grab it and then it'll proc that event and you'll say yes and you'll sail somewhere in the open seas normally and you try and make it before you die and typically you could make it you'd have to fight maybe one or two people but at least there was a chance of you making it now it just feels like it's such a coin flip and it's just not worth the risk but if you really want to try it that's what you're going to do i will warn you though if you're carrying like 20,000 uh, that's probably where you'll be at this point uh 20,000 to 30,000 and then someone takes it from you you're gonna be so disheartened and it's gonna be so painful you're gonna want to uninstall this game i'm just warning you feel free to do it if you want but you could always do that much later down the road when you actually just have coins to, to spare but that is one thing to consider and so if you're going to do that you're gonna want to have some upgrades before you try it though and that specifically is the helm wager upgrades you want to be up to level 10 uh, that's where it reduces the helm chest secure time so when you get to that end zone, that, that lighthouse, you do not need to, to disembark. You just need to survive within the zone. It turns green. And if you actually press X, you'll be able to see the timer and it'll tell you how long you have. It's 30 seconds with no upgrades. But if you do this, then you only need to survive for 10 seconds. And a lot of times you can make it. It's just getting the chest there. And with the cut sales, you're probably not gonna make it. Good luck. Let me know if you have a big haul and you made it. I might just be bad at this game, who knows? I will not do it again, and it broke my spirit the last time I lost my uh, whole stash. So that is this stage if you're if you're considering trying to push for the leaderboard. And I mean, next season when, when it's an equal playing field, everyone's gonna be doing it because that's the only way you're gonna be able to really push for the top probably. So there we go, that's the Helm Wager stage. Now you're in stage five. You've unlocked all the Red Isle. You've unlocked all the East Indies. Uh, you have a really good supply line from the sunny capital down to Taluk that you're able to hit on a, on a consistent basis. You have a decent one from uh, the Dragon's Back all the way to St. Anne through this area. That looks really good. And maybe you tried some Helm Wagers if you had the risk appetite for it, uh, but feel free to do that once a day. But now it is time to open up the coast of Africa. Once you do, it goes back to kind of stage three mentality. You're gonna have a takeover opportunity every 30 minutes. So you gotta be ready to fight there uh, in the hostile takeovers or join a legendary heist. Um, so when you do that, you're gonna be pretty busy. Um, so you have to consider, okay, how do I 
uh, stagger my time then. You're gonna do a, a hostile takeover or a legendary heist, and then you need to still do your supply runs. Uh, make sure that you're collecting from the rovers here. Then you're gonna do your run delivery uh, run, bringing all the delivery down here, especially if they have the rovers, you wanna hit that too. That's just easy pieces of eight. So you're gonna do that every hour, and then you're gonna try and do a supply, uh, do one of your supply routes uh, if you have to extra time in between those takeover opportunities. So then once you have all of this, all of Africa done, uh, or at least as you're progressing through Africa, make sure that you're looking for Harufu, the port to the mines, and uh, Fondle Bay. These will then make two, uh, well, well, they'll be contributors to your new supply routes. So one supply route now will start from Elder's Cave. And once again, when you're doing these supply routes, uh, especially for these more heavy production cities, and if we look back at our spreadsheet here, you can see Harufu and Fondle Bay and Port de Mines are the three top producers here. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're feeding these guys some helm material. Get that, that 10X gain so that this is now producing 5,220 gold per hour. It's crazy. And so that, that's really, really helpful in keeping these a really productive way to spend time. So you're going to go here, boom, blast off down to the bottom of the Red Isles. This will be your route. And then you'll come back up. So you want to start leveling these up too, if you haven't been leveling them up. And then from the, the top, you're now going to teleport to the Navigator's Cross. Remember, bring your supply material so you can uh, give this a nice supply run. Hit all four of these, then go across, down, follow your original supply route back to St. Anne. So then you're having a two, you're gonna have a three nice routes. You're gonna have the Sunnyville down here, uh, this one right here, and then this one um, down here. So those three routes, you're gonna try and hit those every 20 minutes to an hour so you can keep supplying them with supply, um, the, the helm materials, and then also doing all the regular stuff per hour. If you can do that, you're gonna start growing really fast. And then all you got to do is do your one big run per day, trying to collect all the extra stuff, throw a helm wager if you're really wanting to risk it. But that is how you start really scaling up. Now, in terms of upgrades, the, the, and where you're gonna start investing once you have those three routes pretty much maxed out, then you can start going to empire management, start filling this, this whole page out. That can give some huge bonuses overall to your whole industry. Uh, your trade routes start getting boosts. The trade runs get longer, the supply runs get longer. That's really, really helpful. Um, and so once that page is done, you're, you're gonna be good to go for these upgrades. Otherwise, then you just wanna literally max out all of these to 10, then go back into upgrades and do, you're gonna do the, um, the East Indies first, because the reason you want to do this is it has the poppy and it has um, the snuff. So the opium and uh, snuff production, all of the stuff that's the higher tier contraband usually. So that's why you want to boost East Indies. Then you want to do the coast of Africa for because that's more the gin um, increases. And then Red Isles last because rum is typically not being used as, uh, as the resource uh, you're selecting. And then you finish off with the smuggler skills because uh, the high end stuff here is not super helpful. And that's where you're gonna start to really climb. Once these are all level 10, you can kind of sit back and relax. You fund and it, it funds for like a day and a half. It's not even an issue for, it doesn't require a lot of time there, but you will have to do that major run where you walk around and pick up everything and then if you really are trying to push it, you have to double or nothing. And I mean, I think if you pick up everything just full, it's like 300,000 and then you can double or nothing. And it goes up to like 675,000 and that's the big run. Uh, I, I know a guy who's done a 400,000 run, absolutely crazy. Um, but that's what you have to do if you wanna be at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, and it is possible, it just takes some time. Um, doing those supply runs is the big key though. Don't waste your time trying to do these big runs every time you finish. Like it's just a waste of time, especially in some of these that just are like, you don't wanna waste your, your resources leveling up bad cities like Fort de Luis, that's pointless. Like it's 88 gold per hour. Like it's just not even worth your time when you have stuff that does almost, does over 500. Like you don't wanna do that. But that is all I have for the pieces of eight I hope this helps. If there's any other ideas or ways that you have optimized this, comment below, let me know. And if you found this useful, hit that like button, subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time.